I'm Susan Buckbinder. I'm director of Bridge HIV, a research unit within the San Francisco Department of Public Health. And I'm also a clinical professor of medicine and epidemiology at UCSF. Um, my research focuses on HIV prevention strategies, including HIV vaccines. And I am the HVTN protocol chair of the Mosaico trial, which I'm gonna be talking with you about today. I wanna thank the organizers for inviting me to speak about how we incorporated oral PrEP into the Mosaico trial. So we've known for the past decade that oral PrEP with TDF-FTC is highly effective in preventing HIV acquisition for men who have sex with men and transgender women following the publication of the results of the groundbreaking IPREX trial. In 2012, the US FDA licensed daily oral TDF-FTC for PrEP and the US CDC and WHO endorsed its use for men who have sex with men and transgender women. Also in 2012, we learned that four doses per week of TDF-FTC has similar efficacy to daily TDF-FTC for men who have sex with men. This understanding was based on data taken from the STRAND study in which low risk individuals were given twice weekly, four times weekly, or daily TDF-FTC and drug levels measured. When those results were superimposed on data from the IPREX study, it was estimated that the efficacy of PrEP taken four times a week was nearly identical to that taken seven days a week. We then learned that PrEP taken on demand or around the time of sex was also highly effective in preventing HIV infection. The IPREX study tested a 2-1-1 regimen, two pills taken two to 24 hours before sex, one pill 24 hours later, and another pill 24 hours after that. In the randomized trial, efficacy of the 2-1-1 regimen was 86%. In the open label extension, there was a 97% reduction in the risk of HIV infection when compared to the placebo arm in the randomized control trial. Then in 2019, daily oral TAF-FTC was shown to be non-inferior to daily oral TDF-FTC for men who have sex with men and transgender women in the DISCOVER trial. So you'll see we have numerous options for oral PrEP for, to prevent HIV acquisition in men who have sex with men and transgender women. So how can we incorporate a licensed, highly effective prevention product into vaccine trials? Well, there are three trial designs to consider, comparing, layering, or combining PrEP. In the comparing type of trial, one does a head-to-head -head comparison of the novel agent against the proven effective agent. This is what was done in both the DISCOVER and the HPTN-083 studies. The novel agent was compared head-to-head -to, -head to daily oral TDF-FTC. Participants were randomly assigned to receive one or the other, and the HIV infection rates in the two arms were compared. In the layering approach, everyone has access to oral PrEP, but then layered on top of that, participants receive either the novel agent or the placebo. Now, not everyone takes PrEP, but again, it's just layered on top of whatever the background rate is that people either get the novel agent or a placebo. In the combining approach, everyone takes oral PrEP. And then in addition to that, people are randomized to receive the novel agent or the placebo. For the Mosaico study, we chose the layering approach where everyone has access to PrEP and then layered on top of that, half of the people are randomized to receive the vaccine and half to receive the placebo. However, the background rate of uptake has been changing over time. The IPREX results came out during the HVTN 505 study and we began offering all participants PrEP while maintaining the blind about whether they had received vaccine or placebo. At that time, only 5% of participants took up PrEP. If we fast forward to the AMP trial that took place from 2016 to 2020, uptake of PrEP rose to 40%. So if we think about prevention as a mosaic, we have several highly effective prevention strategies. U equals U or undetectable equals untransmittable, condoms, mutual monogamy, and PrEP. What we're trying to do with an HIV vaccine is to fill the prevention mosaic so that everyone has a tile. We most urgently need to find a vaccine for people for whom these other highly effective prevention strategies don't work or aren't desired. 
Now, the issue of limiting vaccine trials to those people without a tile in the mosaic is partly practical, as demonstrated by this theoretical model created by my colleague, Holly James. The higher the uptake and, and the higher the efficacy of the non-vaccine prevention modality, the larger the sample size required for the vaccine trial. But there are also ethical reasons for limiting trials to those who don't have a tile in the prevention mosaic. Whenever we ask people to participate in a trial, we're weighing the risks and benefits to the individual. Including people with a highly effective prevention strategy in vaccine trials is asking them to take on all of the risks and burden of participating in a trial of an experimental product without any of the potential benefit to the individual or to the science because they won't be contributing to the efficacy results. We held a symposium in November of 2018 with clinical trialists, statisticians, advocates, ethicists, the US FDA and various funding agencies. The consensus from that meeting was that it was ethical and acceptable to identify participants for trials who opt out of PrEP, but that this requires complete transparency and ongoing participant education about the effectiveness and availability of PrEP. Jeremy Sugarman and colleagues wrote an article published in the Lancet HIV about ethical considerations for new prevention trials. To quote from that article, one potential approach would be to enroll participants for whom available prevention modalities are contraindicated, for example, drug allergy, or are otherwise unacceptable. Given the trade-offs associated with use of a known, of known, a known effective means of prevention and use of another that is unproven, authenticity of expressions of unacceptability must be ensured. One approach might evaluate individuals expressing interest in a trial and refer them to clinical services. Participants should also be reminded at enrollment and during the trial that their views on acceptability about existing prevention interventions might change and that they can begin an effective means of prevention uh, for HIV without withdrawing from the study. In designing the Mosaico trial, we obtained additional input into the trial design. We've had ongoing consultations with community groups beginning in 2018. A consultation was held in April 2019 that included community activists, ethicists, and faith leaders. All of these consultations formed the basis for developing the PrEP access plans for Mosaico. And we plan ongoing consultations as this is an evolving prevention landscape. So in considering inclusion and exclusion criteria for the for PrEP in the Mosaico trial. We included as inclusion criteria an individual who is considered by the site staff to be at risk for HIV infection. And as exclusion criteria, individ an individual who is taking PrEP at the time of screening and or enrollment. So what we're doing is we're linking participants who are interested in PrEP to PrEP services before screening begins through navigators who help them access PrEP through existing programs and or demonstration projects. We want all participants to make an informed, authentic choice. Participants who choose PrEP will not be enrolled in the study. The target population for the study and the vaccine are those participants without a highly effective prevention strategy and for whom PrEP is not a current or desired choice for HIV pre prevention. So we're layering PrEP into the Mosaico trial. The Mosaico protocol team is committed to ensuring that all study participants receive access to the highest standard of prevention after enrollment, according to local and national guidelines, including counseling, condoms, lubricant, STI diagnosis and treatment, and complete education and access to PrEP while remaining in the trial. These are the mechanics of PrEP use in the Mosaico trial. Participants in screening are counseled about PrEP and linked to PrEP services during the pre-screening process. If they're interested, linkage to PrEP services occur instead of trial participation. After enrollment, if participants change their mind and desire PrEP at any time during the trial, they're linked to PrEP services or provided PrEP. All sites have approved PrEP access plans for both the screening and post-enrollment periods. 
all participants do need to get all of their HIV tests done through the study site because of vaccine-induced seropositivity, otherwise known as VIS. And PrEP use is being measured using dried blood spots and self-report. After our 2019 uh, symposium in April, an NIH ethicist came forward with the following evaluation of our process. She said, exclusion of people choosing PrEP is appropriate because it preserves the scientific and social value of the study by ensuring that HIV vaccine, uh, the HIV vaccine tested in the target population and the HIV incidence in the study is sufficient to evaluate its safety and efficacy. It does not interrupt successful PrEP use in potential participants who are on PrEP. It enables potential participants who are not on PrEP to make a voluntary and informed choice about starting or resuming PrEP by providing comprehensive counseling and access to PrEP. And it excludes the scenario of an unfavorable risk to benefit risk benefit profile for potential participants who are on PrEP and who therefore would assume the risks of being vaccinated with an investigational HIV vaccine without a compensating prospect of clinical benefit because of very low HIV incidence and without a compensating social benefit because their data would not contribute to evaluating efficacy. So with that, I'd like to thank the Janssen team um, that has contributed to the Mosaico trial, as well as the HVTN team. This is a joint effort and it really takes a village to uh, both develop and implement this trial. And of course, I wanna thank our funders and other collaborators and the community who's contributed uh, invaluably to the development of the design and the implementation of this trial. Thank you very much for your attention.